things that you get talked about over the last decade are now being seen by the British public to be true. And that's why our support is rising. But the whole thing reminds me of that lovely story that Bob Monkhouse used to tell, the late great comedian. And Bob Monkhouse said, when I was growing up, I told my friends and family that when I was older, I was going to become a comedian. And they laughed at me. <laughs> but he said, they're not laughing now. <laughs> so it's very gratifying to see week after week in the district and county council by-elections, the UKIP percentage increasing. It's very gratifying to see that in the opinion polls, over the month of May, we were above the Lib Dems and established as the third party in British politics. <laughs> and as a result of that, we've seen over the last two years some very good people joining the party. And you've seen this morning that there are councillors that have joined us, there are activists that have joined us, there are former uh, party, uh, local party chairmen and treasurers and organisers that are coming to the party. And that is good news and it's good for our image. And it's also very gratifying to go to the public meetings of which I seem to do a vast number. I'm calling it my Billy Graham tour. <laughs> and it's very gratifying at these meetings to see a lot of young people now coming to our meetings and being genuinely excited for the fact that here's a political party that actually believes in putting Britain first and is unashamed to stand up and, 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 and to say that. So it's very encouraging. To see what and it's my happy task today to introduce somebody else who is new to the party. Mike Reid will be known to many of you as a very famous Radio 1 presenter, uh, Top of the Pops presenter, and uh, indeed Mike 1 Broadcaster of the Year, more times than we've all got fingers on our hands. So I'm, I suppose, Mike, you're a veteran broadcaster, I guess. I'm, I'm sorry about that, but I guess it's true. But politically, Mike has also been very closely involved with the Conservative Party. He's spoken at many of their conferences. Um, he's been through their candidate training scheme. But he also just recently was involved in something that I think was tremendously important. He was one of the driving forces behind getting that memorial in Hyde Park to Bomber Command put up. <laughs> but he has had a bit of a tough week. Anyone that read today's Daily Mail will realise what I'm talking about. Unfortunately for him, there is a strong likeness between Mike Reed and Nick Buckles, who at the moment is the most unpopular man in Britain. <laughs> so Quentin Letts talked about this in the mail this morning, uh, but he did say that Mike was a good egg, unlike Nick Buckles. Uh, again, as I was saying, it shows you that UKIP is gaining in credibility when people like Mike Reed come along and give that terrific speech on this platform. You know, things really have changed. In the early days, necessarily, we were about the question of who governs Britain. It was our job to wake up the public as to what membership of the common market really meant. But now our job is a much bigger and a much more important job than that. Our job is not just to talk about who governs Britain. Our job is to talk about how that Britain should be governed and for us to point a torch into the future to say there is a bright new hope for this country once we free ourselves from the shackles of the European Union and once we get government back in Westminster that actually has the self-confidence to believe in this country and to believe in its people. And that is now our historic vision. And we're not a bunch of college kids, because they're the ones running the country. You know, we're in touch. You know, we understand that not only are windmills ugly, useless, disgusting, but they're actually costing everybody a fortune. So why don't we take that message out there? Why don't we explain to people that everybody is paying a 15% surcharge? 
on their electricity bills every year just so that people like Avery Cameron's father-in-law could earn a thousand pounds a day just for siting wind turbines on his land in North Lincolnshire. Uh, as Mike said, my job is not to be popular with everybody, but I tell you what, if we go out and tell the British public the truth, they will come out and vote for us in increasing numbers. And let's become the party that is the champion of enterprise, ambition, hard work. Now there are 4.2 million people out there that run small businesses or who act as sole traders. They are the people that have suffered more as a result of our EU membership than, any, than anybody else. Employment regulations, health and safety regulations, environmental regulations. We can only cut back red tape. We can only deal with bureaucracy. We can only give these people a real chance to get on if we cut our ties with the EU and then deregulate British industry. If we get rid of half of that employment legislation, if just one in four of those small businesses takes on school lever, we will get rid of the youth unemployment problem. This is a good thing. And we have a golden opportunity. You know, we know that Miliband is signed up to the European project. We know that Clegg is in love with the European project. <laughs> That's because he's going to lose Sheffield Hallam and he wants to be the next Euro Commissioner after Baroness Ashton, of course. <laughs> Did somebody boo Baroness Ashton? <laughs> How extraordinary. She's even less known than Herman Van Rompuy, you know. <laughs> but Roger Hallam this morning got it right. You see, for most of UKIP's history, we had a Conservative Party that was in opposition. They were Blair and Brown years. And people used to say to me, well, Nigel, we agree with you. We love what you're doing. We're pleased you're there. You're a different voice in British politics. But we can't vote for you, said the Tory voters, because we want to get rid of Labour. We want to have the Tory government. And then they used to say to me, and just you wait till David gets it. <laughs> oh, you'll see. You'll see what a patriotic, Eurosceptic Conservative leader he's going to be. Well, this week was final proof positive, if ever it were needed, that under this Prime Minister, nothing is going to change at all. He gave that interview in the Telegraph, and he made it clear that under his leadership, there will never be a referendum on our membership of the European Union. And as we're here, in the southeast of England, we are right in the middle of the Tory heartlands. And the message that you must take from this room, and you must tell it to your friends and your families, and we must put it on our election material, is that if you are a patriotic, Eurosceptic Conservative, there is now only one party for you, and that party is not called the Conservative Party, that party is called UKIP, and that party is going places. Now, in the past, we've been very good at fighting European elections. It's been enormous fun. Three of us getting elected back in 1999, and then in 2004, we came third. Beating the Lib Dems in the fourth spot. And in 2009, we came second. Terrific stuff. An amazing performance. But what we've got to start doing, if we want to get seats in Westminster and really be a serious political party, We've got to start winning seats at local level. And we've got to grab every opportunity that is before us. And I think what is happening on November the 15th represents a major opportunity for this party. Whether you think elected police commissioners are a good thing or not, frankly, isn't the point. The elections are going to happen anyway. It would appear that from the Conservative Liberal Democrat and Labour parties, they will all put up a succession of career professional politicians to stand as police commissioners. And what we've got to do is fight those elections with real people, and real people with real messages. I want the British public to know and to understand that we are the party of liberty. We believe in habeas corpus. 
We believe in the presumption of innocence before guilt, and we will fight to the last to defend the principle of jury trial and all the things that in many ways have made this country great. We must fight for that in those elections. those elections on the basis that under the Lisbon Treaty, unless we opt out in 2014, the entire British judicial system will come under the European Union's area of freedom, security and justice. It even sounds Soviet these days, doesn't it? <laughs> but what it will mean is the end of common law. What it will mean is the change to an inquisitorial system. And we've seen some specimens of that with the European arrest warrant. Do you remember the lad from North London, who was accused of a crime, was sent off to some appalling Greek prison, kept there for nearly two years, and then released without charge because they realised they got the wrong man. We've got to campaign. In these police commissioner elections, we've got to wake up the British public to the fact that a big decision needs to be taken in 2014 and we've got to fight like hell to make sure that we keep our own judicial system. That's something else we've got to be out there campaigning for on November the 15th. And I think there's a further message that we must take to those elections. And it's a message that our career politicians have run away from, I think on the grounds of political correctness. But frankly, whether we like it or not, the criminal base in this country has grown substantially over the last few decades. And frankly, I think it is absolutely appalling to say that 400 convicted sex offenders who have been allowed out of prison before serving their terms have committed rape over the course of the last three years. It is truly shocking, it is truly appalling, nobody else is prepared to deal with it, and we have to fight those elections safe. But there's no question in our mind that to make the streets of this country safe, we have got to put these people away in prison for much longer sentences, and if it means building prisons, then that's what we must do. You know, we're talking this afternoon about the county council elections of next year. There are 2,100 seats up for county council elections next year across England. 25% of those seats are here in the southeast. And I think this party now understands it. It's got the taste for it. And my message to you folks today is please come and help us. Make sure that we actually feel a, a candidate, a UKIP candidate, in every single county council seat across the southeast of England. If we do that, and if we then cleverly target the right wards, the right divisions to fight, we will get people elected onto those county councils next year. And if we do that, that will be a massive stepping stone towards winning the European elections of 2014, and that is my intention. And if we do that, and we have the momentum with us, we will break through into the Westminster Parliament in 2015. We've got everything going for us. The wind is with us. I ask those of you that believe in us, that support us, please, please, come forward, put your names ahead, get yourselves on those ballot papers, and let's make this party a great party that changes the history of our nation. Thank you very much.